coming up on CPTV. New Learning Common Rule raises student questions. The theater department prepares for opening night of their fall show, and the girls' basketball team kicks off their season with a big win. CPTV is up next. Hi, I'm Elise Hockbaum. And I'm Olivia Bianco. Welcome to CPTV. Lexi Simos will have your five-day weather forecast and Blake Pesch will bring us CP Sports highlights. Here's what's happening at Crown Point High School. A new rule has been implemented in the learning commons, putting a limit on the capacity allowed in the space during each period. Effective immediately, a maximum of 60 students are allowed in the learning commons during each period as a way to decrease the noise. Here's CPTV's Maddie Massey with more. The Learning Commons is a great place to gather all throughout the day, such as in the morning, during the study hall, and during their lunch period. But when it comes to how many people don't want to go to the cafeteria during lunch, how much is too much? The new rule for the Learning Commons is that we could only allow 60 students into the Learning Commons for each lunch period. So Ms. Hume and I um, just stand at either door because we want it to be as fair as possible and just count 30 people coming in. We had to put it into effect. Um, there's just Ms. Hume and myself in the Learning Commons during all the lunches, and we were getting upwards of 150 students, 170 students, um, and the noise levels became very, very loud. We do have three testing rooms uh, in the Learning Commons as well, and there's testing that goes on every single period of the day. Other factors were the the messes that were left in here um, and we would find cheese between chairs. We had melted ice cream on seats um, that nobody would clean up or let us know hey there's a mess to come pick up. People were just throwing garbage on the floor. So for us to be able to monitor that many students and, and help the room to be clean as well. Um, those were kind of some of the reasonings behind it. And we have our own work to do as well. We, you know, all the Chromebooks that are repaired, they all come through the Learning Commons. So I think we have about 2,800 kids. So anytime there's a problem with a Chromebook, they, they come to us or RDS issues, that kind of thing. So it allows us to be able to perform our duties in here as well. We want this to be a place for the students. We mm -hmm. want the kids to come in here. We love that this is a place that they feel comfortable and a place that they know that they can go to but there has to be some limitations because we can we, we are doing our very best to monitor the room i think it's too restrictive i mean we have like a bunch of stuff to use here and we aren't utilizing it as we should i think that there shouldn't be restrictions because everybody should be able to come in here and read a book whenever they want to i understand why they have like 60 people coming in at a time but like at the same time, I think whoever wants to come in should be able to come in. It's just a little bit restrictive. Although we all have differing opinions on the Learning Commons new rule, hopefully we can all come to a better understanding of why it's set in place. From CBTV, I'm Madeline Massey. The Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America are hosting their annual Thanksgiving food drive until this Friday, November 15th. To help donate to CP families in need, bring non-perishable foods to your first period class. All the donations will go to three different Crown Point food pantries. The class that brings in the most donations will be rewarded with donuts and juice next Monday. Resource Period was first introduced as a way for students to promote positive relationships in our school setting, receive academic assistance, and support college and career readiness. To be fair, those activities actually occur during on a weekly basis, but not everyone can be always on board, right? CPTV's Rocco Jan popped into one resource room to find out. Hey guys, Rocco Jan from CPTV here. Uh, I'm just kind of roaming the hallways right now, just seeing what's going on in uh, Crown Point High School here. And I'm just going to go to a resource and just kind of see what's going on, you know, what's really going on in our resource classrooms. Well, let's take a look. Hey guys. Yeah. what happens every day in resource. I come in and they go nuts. It's the whole thing. You know, it's my boy Sam right here is relaxing. Um, he's 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 really just he's really just sleeping. Like 
I didn't make this up. This is just happening. Uh, so we're just, uh, you know, we're in here in resource. Uh, you know, we're we're chilling. Uh, everyone just kind of chilling in here. What what are you up to, Holly? Like, um, before I came into this interview, I was doing my French homework or trying to do my French homework. I kept getting distracted and playing word villas, but or villas. I don't know how to pronounce words. Hi guys, what's up? Hi. Hi. Um, you know, it's it's going. How how are you guys doing today? Fine. I'm doing pretty good. Could be better. That's true. I can I can relate to that. Um, so yeah, we're just doing a segment on resource here. Uh, what do you guys kind of say about resource? Like, what are you guys kind of doing here? I finish my work, then I communicate with my friends. You know, I just really love to work on my homework. Homework is kind of key. My man Sam, uh, just gonna, gonna, gonna stop, man. You good? You good? What's up? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> What's up, dude? How, how are you? How are you, man? Feeling kind of good. Nice, nice. You're refreshed, bro. Yeah. That sounds good, man. That sounds good to me. Uh, we're just, you know, we're always energized here at uh, Crown Point High School. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. From CPTV, I'm Rocco Jan. World Recycle Day is on November 15th, and the Green Machine Club will be hosting a door decorating contest to promote recycling and saving the planet. Students will have to the end of the day today to submit photos of their favorite teacher's doors decorated with the theme of recycling. Students will then be able to vote for their favorite door during lunch periods. Speaking of Green Machine, the club was originally created with the mission of promoting recycling within the school building. But the club has grown to perform many thankless tasks each week to support a healthy planet and change our culture. Here's CPTV's Ramsey Harkness with more. Recycling and climate control both become bigger topics in today's political climate. Here's what Crown Point High School and Green Machine are doing to help. We pick up recycling uh, every Thursday after school. We meet in my room, E208. Uh, everyone is welcome if you need um, service hours for graduation or one of your other club requirements. You are welcome to come in. You do not have to come in every week. You can come in when you need it or when you're available. Um, stop by and help us out. Uh, earn some service hours. Uh, we go around to every classroom that has a bin. We pick that up and we bring it back to my classroom and we actually we actually sort through it by hand. Um, so students put on gloves and if trash was thrown in the recycling bin, it is discarded. Um, sometimes it gets a little smelly if people put in milk cartons and things like that that have been sitting there for a week. Um, it smells pretty bad sometimes. I definitely recommend people joining it because it's just, you meet a lot of different people and again, you're helping the community and we all just joke around when we're picking up the recycling and it's just an all around fun thing to do. Wow, did it get cold or what? It's been a while since we've had a couple of snowstorms before Thanksgiving. Here's CPTV's Lexi Simos with a look at your weather and your five day weather forecast. The temperatures have varied these past few weeks but we will see some cold temperatures in the next few days. Before we get into the five-day forecast, let's take a look at what you should expect in Crown Point throughout today. It will remain mostly cloudy throughout the day as we reach our 25 at noon. This afternoon, clouds will remain and temperatures will hold steady throughout the day. Falling temperatures throughout the night and there is a chance of snowfall before midnight. For your five-day forecast, tomorrow the high will be at 36 degrees with bitter winds in the area. On Friday, temperatures will remain and the high will only be in the high 30s. As we head into your weekend, on Saturday we will see a high of 39 with precipitation and winds early in the morning. Sunday with a high of 41 and a low of 29. There will also be snowy conditions, sleet and ice mixed in throughout the day as well. Monday, we're looking at highs in the low 40s with cloudy skies. Looks like you'll have to keep out your hats and gloves. That's your five day weather forecast. Elise, Olivia. Thanks, Lexi. Cold for a couple more days and a little warming. The football team played in their fourth sectional championship game in a row Friday night, and the girls' basketball team kicked off their highly anticipated season on Saturday. Here's Blake Pesh with your CP Sports highlights. On Friday night, the football team took on Maryville for the sectional championship. Maryville grabbed the lead early in the first quarter, scoring a touchdown and converting the extra point, putting them up 7-0. In the second quarter, however, CP tied the game with a touchdown of their own on a 53-yard pass from junior quarterback Will Pettit to senior Tyson Casey. Late in the second quarter, Maryville kicker Austin Pupik was able to put in a 29-yard field goal to take the lead 10-7 going into the half. Early in the third quarter, CP junior Felix Meek strip sacked Maryville's quarterback, which resulted in the football being knocked out of the end zone and gave the dogs two points on the safety. 
making the score 10 to 9. That's where the score stood the rest of the game. CP had two chances late, but couldn't convert those opportunities into points, and CP loses their first sectional in four years. Will Pettit finished the game 8 for 14 with 113 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions, and one fumble loss. Junior Matthew Walters had 15 carries for 45 yards. Tyson Casey finished with two catches for 65 yards and a touchdown, while senior tight end Ben Uran finished with a team-high four catches for 42 yards. Saturday night, the girls' basketball team took on Gary Westside in their first game of the season. The Dogs got out to an early 20-4 lead in the first and never looked back. Sophomore guard Jessica Carruthers ended with a wild stat line of 23 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, and 10 steals on 77% shooting. In her first game for CP against her former school, senior guard Dash Shaw put up 17 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists while also grabbing 7 steals along the way. The Bulldogs won the contest 76-16 and ended with an absurd 32 steals as a team. Their next game will be at home this Saturday with tip-off at 7 p.m. against Hammond Morton. Saturday evening, the Purdue Northwest Lions D2 hockey team took on the Michigan Wolverines club team at Bulldog Park. PNW took the 1-0 lead early headed into the first intermission. This turned out to be a nice event for the region as a nice-sized crowd was in attendance to support both the Purdue and U of M teams. After sunset, the temperatures drop and fans can be found huddled around the Bulldog Park's fire pits. However, after the first intermission, it was all Wolverines. Michigan was just too dominant on the boards and on penalty plays. The puck spent most of the next two periods on Purdue's end of the ice. Michigan scored five straight goals and ended up with a 5-1 win. Purdue will play two more games at Bulldog Park Friday and Saturday, November 22nd and 23rd, versus Missouri State with puck drops at 7 and 1 p.m. respectively. And that's it for sports. Each year, CPHS sees a few more clubs added to our offerings. This year, senior Adina Daniels is founding the Sign Language Club. This club will teach students not only how to do basic signing, but will also how to carry on conversations using American Sign Language. They will host a meeting today after school in room E206. We're lucky to learn and interact in a pretty diverse setting. There's lots of interesting people who have lived some incredible journeys. This week in our Humans of Crown Point series, we focus on CPHS sophomore Andrew Labus. My name is Andrew Labus. I'm 16 years old and I'm currently a sophomore in high school. I have a twin, his name is Will Labus. So we were born at tw uh, 25 weeks, five days, and we, well, my mom figured out that she had twins who had CP, and she was going to try and do everything to make our life as normal as possible. So I've been told that I'm a pretty positive person and I will connect that to the friends that I've made over the years and the family that have helped me up and helped me and Will through life and I would just not be where I was today without them. My favorite classes this year are probably gym and choir because I love to sing and I'm currently a baritone choir, which I'm glad I am because I cannot reach talent or bass level, so I feel like it's a perfect fit. My dreams and goals are that I would like to be a co uh, sports commentator with my best friend, Harry Smith, and I gave him a 18-year plan, and we are still hoping to do that, but, well, I would just say, oh, live out your dreams and never let anybody hold, hold you down, and you can be wherever you want to be. The Student Council Blood Drive will take place this Friday from 7.30 to 1.15 in the Fieldhouse. Students over the age of 16 will be allowed to have their blood drawn, while students who are 16 will need a parent consent form. Participants can sign up during all lunches. Today is the last day to sign up. Finally, the CPHS Theater Department will open their fall play, But Why Bump Off Barnaby, Friday evening. This fun murder mystery will run performances on November 15th, 16th, 22nd, and 23rd, starting at 7 p.m. Here's CPTV's Brianna Morton with more.
The CPHS Theater Department is putting on this year's fall production, But Why Bump Off Barnaby, which is a slapstick whodunit mystery. To get to know more about the show, I asked cast and crew a few questions. I play Medkins the butler. Uh, the show is a classic whodunit. The play is about a family reunion that goes awry when somebody is murdered. I play Orrin LaDuke. He is a baronet. He owns Margate Manor, which the show takes place in, and where all of the crazy stuff goes down. Orrin is gathering them all to break the tontine. And a tontine is people who pool a lot of money and then the survivor wins. And then murders start happening and that's when it starts being intense. I play Jeff Barnett, a police reporter from Delaware. I'm the only American in this show and I'm a police reporter so when the murder happens I try to figure out what's going on and everything like that. My favorite part of the show, um, I'd say either the limerick section when we're all reading our limerick, limerick lines um, or I see when I enter, it's a fun little bit. So yeah, that's my favorite part. Has a couple of good lines in there and then act three, well, it's really good. So you're gonna have to go see it yourself. We've worked super duper hard and I'm in it, so. <laughs> Looks like it's gonna be a great show. For tickets, you can buy them at cphstheater.com. For CPTV, I'm Brianna Morton. That's it for today's show. Thanks for tuning in and being with us. Remember, you can view all of our past episodes on crowntownmedia.org. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Crown T Media. For Blake Pesh, Lexi Seamouse, and all of us here at CPTV, I'm Olivia Bianco. And I'm Elise Hochbaum. Take care. Take care.